Well, welcome to Minitab. We've been threatening to talk about this for some time, so now it's about time we did. Now, first of all, I have to tell you, many of you will become frustrated with Minitab. It is a very simple statistical program, but it's not Excel, and you're probably going to wish it was. Okay, so Minitab is, is not like a spreadsheet. It is a database, and it only uh, does operations on columns. However, Minitab is, uh, in general, used by 95% of the companies that are doing Six Sigma. And the reason for that is because it has a very extensive help function. And what we're going to do is we're going to have two videos. In the first one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk you through Minitab and show you all of the different features that Minitab has and how to interpret Minitab. In the second video, what we'll do is we will then talk about the specific statistical features you will most likely be using as a green belt. And so we'll talk a little bit about the ones that we've used in terms of exploratory data analysis and in terms of the individual charts, capability studies, Pareto plots, and analysis of variance, and even we'll show you regression. So all of those are pretty standard tools that you'll use. We'll also show you the probability plot that we mentioned. We'll also show you how the Minitab could be used in terms of uh, understanding graphical representations and what sort of graphical outputs can be used to, to display the data. So without any further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to get into Minitab 17. So this is what Minitab looks like. Across the top, you see very familiar types of icons and, and pop-up windows. So I say File, then Edit, Data, Calc, Stat, and Graph. And then we come over, we don't really use editor and tools very much, but what we do use then is windows to understand what's going on. The help function is very good, and the assistant will talk about use with caution. <coughs> I don't know what that does, but excuse me, guys. Okay. So, and the assistant is caveat emptor, use with caution. So let's go back and start taking a look. What do we have here? Well, here's the session window. Here it says, welcome to Minitab, press F1 for help. So even if you don't know anything, you figure out already exactly what to do if you can read. Okay, now this is going to record all of the things that we do in Minitab. So if I come up here and I say, I wanna do a stat function, basic stat, display descriptive statistics, and I click okay, and it gives me a window, I have to input some variables. I don't have data, so nothing's going to happen. And notice nothing gets written in here because nothing was done. So only when things are actually performed will I get a history. And I can also type in there. So I can type in here, begin my mini tab session. So I can use this as a way to record my comments about the analysis that we're going to be doing, things that are going on, or my commentary about interpretation of analyses that were just done. So here is where we get the textual output from the mini tab. Then we come down to the worksheet. This looks an awful lot like Excel, except each of these columns is an individual factor. Each of these numbers here in the rows, those are lines of data, if you will. And so we have factors and then lines of data. Each of those is an instance or an observation that we would have in our data sheet. This is more like a database than, a, than a, a spreadsheet. And so we see those are two of the foundations. And then we come up here. Let's walk through these, these at the top. So we see File. So we can take a look at New. I can start a new project or a worksheet. So what's the difference? A worksheet is just the textual data that we have below. It's just a database, if you will. And so I can put multiple worksheets within one project. A project, however, is a recording not only of the data sheets, but also the session window, and it's going to also record a history. So all of the different functions that we execute, all of the graphical outputs that come out of the analyses are saved. So one of the things you'll want to do as a green belt is, for each green belt project, initiate a new project. Now my recommendation is, for every phase you go through, to create a new project folder and maybe for every exploratory data analysis or every independent inquiry. Now, you'll probably get a lot of them. So think up a naming convention like GB01, like Greenbelt 01 project, and then what phase you're in, D phase, for instance, analysis 001, or something like this that makes sense to you so you can figure out 
where all of these files are and how they relate to each other. Another thing I'm going to recommend to you is one of the outputs that we can have is an output of a graph. And if you copy the graph by just right clicking on it, you can then paste it directly into PowerPoint. So as you're going through and doing analyses, when you see something that you want to preserve to talk to management about or, or for a report, it's easy just to keep that going and, and doing it and saving that information as you go through the analysis. So this is one thing we can do. We can start a new project. I can go to open and I can open a project, a worksheet, a graph, or an Excel file. So it then takes me to where I have my different data stored in the computer. So I'm not going to do this right now, but just to give you an idea of what's available. So I can open Excel. I could open a window for a mini tab, a pass folder, either a project or a worksheet. I can save the project, or I can save the project as a new name, or I can uh, save the session window. So I can just save the textual file. A and those are all different opportunities that I have for saving the functions. Here I see query uh, database. So this is an ODBC database. So in many of your companies that you might work in, they might have a central computer with a database. And your IT people can figure out the routing to let you go directly from Minitab to that database to conduct analyses. I can print a session window. I can print the setup of the Minitab file. And I can actually describe the project of the worksheet and all the information in it. Uh, you'll see later here we have recent files so that the last files that we were working on could be accessed rel relatively quickly. So this is the file function. We come to edit, and here we have undo. That's always helpful because I always find myself making mistakes. And also edit last dialog box. If I want to repeat an analysis, I saw a mistake, I didn't do something right, or I want to try it again with a different factor. It just takes me right back to the last analysis I had. And most of these others are just the copy, cut, and face uh, functions that you see normally in a system. Data, we can take a look and, and create different ways to parse the database that we have here. So we can create a subset of the database, we can split it, we can take a column and stack different worksheets on top of each other, we can merge worksheets together, I can stack or unstack columns so I can move them around, and all of those are different ways that we can manipulate the systems to understand what's going on. I can sort a column, I can put it into rank order, I can delete rows, uh, or I can erase a whole variable or a column. I can do some conditional formatting around some of the cells. And I can change the data type. Now this is something that might be helpful to you if you find yourself changing attribute data into variable data or something like this. Because Minitab is only going to, once you've declared a data to be attribute or, or text data, it won't allow you to have numerical functions. It won't even present that column as an option for you to click on as a factor. So when that happens, if you know the data is right, go back into this uh, data function and then change the variable tape, uh, date, uh, data type, excuse me. Let me go back and save that all over again. You can go back and change the data type. Okay, I hope you can edit that. Um, let's say it once more. Okay. Have a, have a pause and then you can just uh, say what you would have okay. normally from the beginning of the sentence. Okay. So you can do conditional formatting. You can code the variables from text to numeric or text to numeric, or you can change the data type. Many times you might find data has been recorded one way and you can actually change it to a different data type. But to do it actually and see the operation, you need to go to change the data type in many tabs memory. And so you go to change the data type and change it from text to numeric or numeric to text. If you don't do that, the data that's called textual data, it will not even be presented as a selectable option for analysis by Minitab. So when that's happening, this is one of the cues that you need to change it. If we go to the calc column here, we see that you can have a calculator, which isn't so good. You can do calculations of statistics in columns and rows. And you can also make pattern data. And sometimes you might want to create um, oh, like a, a textual format uh, for collection, data collection. So you want to have different patterns of stuff like this. I can also mesh data together. Um, under pattern data, I can also have uh, simple sets of numbers, textual values, arbitrary numbers, and so forth. But I can also do random data. 
And random data, if you notice at the very top, it says sample from the columns. This is a very helpful thing. If I've got a lot of data and I want to understand what's going on, I need small samples to do that, not large samples, as you'll learn. So I want to sample from the column. So I go sample from the column and take 50 or 100 data sets out of 10,000 columns. And Minitab will randomize and take those. Now each time you go, you'll get a different set of numbers because Minitab is using a random number generator to pull those data out. So every time you do it, it's like having a different sample draw on the same population. I can also create data with different types of statistical distributions. And you see that there's quite a few here available for selection. I can also go to probability distributions and start understanding how these things are actually working in terms of chi-square distributions and so forth. Now, by the way, if I'm skipping over some functions, it means that you're probably not using them as a green belt, okay? And you'll start seeing now as I get into statistics, this is going to happen a lot. Okay, so basic statistics. We have graphical display, and so this is a good one to have, and also graphical summary. Mostly what I recommend you use is graphical summary. That's just giving you a basic statistical calculations of data. Next, we're going to see hypothesis testing a variety of different things, and then a normality test. And so the normality test is one of the two places where we can understand is the data normal that we have in the distribution. Regression, we'll see that we can do fitted line plots and different types of regression studies, and we'll come across these in the analyze phase. ANOVA, one-way ANOVA, this is the one that we're going to use in exploratory data analysis, and I'll talk about this one in the next video. Uh, DOE, we'll talk about factorial designs of designed experiments when we get to talk about the improved phase of DMAIC. Control charts. Here are control charts for individuals. This is the one for the individuals chart that we will use again when we talk about exploratory data analysis and we want to have an analytic time series view of what's happening. Under quality tools, we see two of the other tools that we're going to want to use for exploratory data analysis. We see the Pareto chart, and we also see the probability, the capability analysis. And we'll use capability analysis normal. Now, even though your data is not normal, I want you to use normal, okay? And we'll come back and we'll talk about that again in the next video. Most of these reliability and multivariable statistics are used at a black belt or higher levels. The time series information can be helpful when we take a look at these in terms of more advanced statistical tools, but again, they're getting into the black belt level. Under the tables, though, we see chi-squared statistics and goodness of fit, and we'll start seeing there's tally, which we had talked about, uh, in terms of uh, having a, a textual version of a Pareto analysis. And so those are all things that are going to be uh, uh, tools that might be helpful to us a little bit later, and again, we'll talk about those in the analyze phase. Power and sample size, we'll also talk about in the analyze phase. How much data should we have? And we'll see that this is a good what-if analysis to understand what are the trade-offs between risks and decision-making and sample size. So again, all of those tools will be very helpful to us. Graphical analysis, we can take a look at scatter plots and understand how two variables relate to each other and get the graphical picture of that. Uh, we can take a look at bubble plots if you like to understand uh, the different sizes of markets, for instance, that you're going to be taking a look at for different types of products. Uh, straight histograms, and, and then here we have our probability plots where we can understand different probability curves. And again, we'll talk about these in the analysis phase along with the empirical CDF. Um, we have box plots, which we will get also out of the ANOVAs, but we can get them uh, just a box plot of regular data and then the types of plots that you get out of Excel, so bar charts, pie charts, time series, and so forth. The, the uh, last thing in the windows here, what we start seeing is many times we'll be doing a lot of analysis in Minitab, and we'll have many, many windows open. It starts running very slow. And so we can come here and start seeing what windows we have. We can cascade them or tile them to see what's available. We can start closing the windows. That will speed up very much the functionality of Minitab. And we come over to help function. And this was the thing that we said that was most particularly uh, a benefit in terms of Minitab. 
So as we're looking at health, we see that StatGuide is here. StatGuide is an online statistics course, basically, that teaches you everything you could learn about uh, statistics. So that's like a reference manual. Tutorials are a set of individual tutorials that you can study. If you want to understand what the statistical terms mean, there's a glossary. If you want to understand how many tab did some calculations, the methods and formulas. So all of those are different ways for you to understand what's really happening in Minitab. So if you haven't been using it for some time, you might use StatGuide and refresh what's going on. Now, one thing I want to show you is if I don't understand anything at all about Minitab and I want to do like a one-way ANOVA, notice down here the help function. So help is contextually activated. So I can go in here, I can get an overview of what's going on in analysis of variance. I can go back and learn how to do it. Uh, I can also go back and see an example of it. I can see how to put the data in. I can see how to interpret the results. And if I want to understand how to put the data in, I get this very brief thing and then there's some in information about how to order the data. And C also gives me a reference, so I can take a look at methods and formulas and example, different graph editing tools, and so forth. So this context-sensitive help is really a very important thing when you haven't done a methodology before. You can go back and study how does that tool actually work. You can work through the examples. All of the examples, Minitab has given you those uh, data files uh, in a, a particular uh, related folder here. So you can go work the examples that Minitab has presented for you. The final thing that's here that I want to show you is the Minitab Assistant. And what Minitab Assistant is, it's a uh, guided study program. Now many people make the mistake of using this for data analysis. As an engineer, please do not do that. For instance, what you'll see is in doing this, you have a lot of shortcuts. You get a statistician's answer, but not an engineer's answer to what's going on. So all of this is very safe from a statistical viewpoint in terms of a statistician. But what we're going to teach you in Greenbelt training is how to do the data as an engineer, how to use data and to think about the process differently. And so we're going to have a very different perspective than a classical statistician. So many statisticians will tell you the first thing to do is to normalize the data, to, to transform it into a normal distribution before you do the analysis. And I'm going to tell you, never transform your data at the beginning of your process. You experience it that way, understand it that way, you've been interpreting it that way and using it that way in the past. And if you transform it, people won't know what they're actually doing and won't be able to relate to their past decisions. So there are lots of reasons to do things from a statistician's viewpoint because all these statistics were designed for normal distributions. So they want them in normal distributions to be statistically pure. However, remember, we have dirty data in messy processes. And as engineers, we have to deal with that and understand what happened before we start becoming, if you will, a statistical purist. So that's your brief insight into Minitab. What I would suggest is go to www.minitab.com, take a look at some of the tutorials. They have a much expanded set beyond here. Take a look at some of the YouTube videos to get familiar with it. Minitab is not easy to learn, it's not really intuitive, but once you get the hang of it, you'll start seeing the power of what you can learn. And it's just like the very first time you used Excel. Most of you didn't know how to do auto tables or pivot tables, for, if you will, or auto filters. And you have to be able to practice and learn what's going on with Minitab just as you did with Excel. And once you spend about the same amount of time, you'll find, wow, there are a lot of interesting things here that are really going to help you on your job. So we'll come back and we'll take a look at our second video where we focus on the functions that we will use for exploratory data analysis.